The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Are you covered by Social Security? Then please listen carefully. Public opinion polls by the Equitable Life Assurance Society show that millions of Americans know little about their Social Security. Yes, according to these Equitable Society surveys, you may be failing to safeguard rights worth thousands of dollars. Therefore, as a public service, the Equitable Life Assurance Society will devote this program's entire middle commercial due in just 14 minutes to information on Social Security. Information that may mean money in your pocket. Tonight's FBI file, Operation Ransom. Motives which lie behind the more than one and a half million major crimes committed every year in this country are as varied as the types of crimes themselves. Some criminals engage in illegal activities because of the temptation for so-called easy money. Others commit crimes out of passion or because of a craving for revenge. But whatever the motive, every criminal believes that he will succeed without paying for his crime. He is sure that circumstances will conspire to make his capture impossible because, as he sees it, he has every advantage on his side. Not only must he be captured, but he must then be proven guilty beyond the shadow of a doubt. What he does not realize is that actually there are no advantages on his side, except for one. That single asset which always belongs to the criminal is the element of time. For he alone is the one who decides when the crime is to take place. He alone is the one who decides which is the proper moment for him to strike. Tonight's file opens near a bridal path in a large park in a Midwestern city. Two men are strolling along a gravel path. Take it easy, Harry. Hmm? Huh? Don't walk so fast. We're not going anyplace. Yeah, okay. Oh, it's a lovely spring morning, Harry. Mm-hmm. Man doesn't get enough of these. Yeah. Look around you, Harry. Isn't it glorious? George, we didn't come out to admire the scenery. I know, Harry. We've got work to do. You can still enjoy nature. Just look at that grass sprouting up. The tiny green buds in the trees. Why, a man... George, there she goes. I see it. Yeah, she's right on time again. She's been on time every day now for a week. So she has, Harry. Well, it's about time we made our move. We're not ready yet. That's what you've been saying all week. If you ain't ready now, we'll never be. Harry, I've told you before, the success of any venture rests on the planning. We got plans. But we haven't insured them yet. When will that be? When we know everything there is to know about Alice Woods. Every habit she has, every friend she has, even every hat she wears. Those things take time, Harry, but they reduce the risk. That's the important thing. Mm, I know, I know. We'll be ready soon. When we are, the young lady will be kidnapped. days later, in the local FBI field office, Special Agent Jim Taylor has just entered the office of Agent in Charge Evans. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Jim. Sit down. Thank you. Here's the name and address of a woman who just called me. I'd like you to go over and see her. All right, sir. Mrs. Martha Woods, 720 North 50th Street, huh? Mrs. Woods said that her daughter is missing. How did she happen to call here? She called the local police, and they suggested that she get in touch with us. Oh, I see. There's a suspicion of kidnapping, and that's why we're in it. Oh? Now, it may or may not be the reason she's missing, but we're better off playing it safe and getting in at the start. I see, sir. Um, 
Did Mrs. Woods tell you anything? Yeah, she said that she got a phone call from a girl named Rosemary Rice, who's a friend of her daughter's. What's her daughter's name? Alice Woods. Mm -hmm. Uh, The girlfriend said that she was riding a horse in the park this morning, some hundred yards or so behind Miss Woods, and she saw the missing girl stop and dismount. Where was that, sir? Near 53rd Street entrance to the park. Mm -hmm. She walked over to talk to a man who had called her while she was riding. Miss uh, Rice didn't recognize this man, did you? I don't know, Jim. At any rate, the man walked the girl over to a car that was parked at the roadside. There, they met another man, and the three of them spoke for a few seconds. I see. Then Miss Woods was forced into the car, and it drove off. Any description on the car? Yes, it is a 1947 Buick sedan, color black. Any license plate number? No, but it was an out-of-state license. Out-of-state. Go up and see if you can get a picture of Alice Woods from her mother. If you can, have some copies made. All right, sir. Uh, I'm also putting Bob Clinton on this case to work with you, Jim. Fine. As soon as you get back, we can have a meeting and decide which move to make first. Eh? Who's that? Me. Oh. How is everything? The young girl's asleep. I was just in there. Did she wake up at all? No. Those pills really put her away. I wish I'd taken some. What do you mean? Well, I couldn't hear that music. What are they playing on, washboards? <laughs> Harry, you just aren't a music lover. That's music? Customers think so. You ought to go downstairs and see the business that joins to No, 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 thanks. It's bad enough up here. I just sent the note to Jocko. Oh? What'd you ask for? 25000 I wonder if he'll go for it. Got to. This is his daughter. He loves the kid. 25000 is a lot of moolah. Not to Jocko. I say... Suppose he goes to the cops. Harry, bookmaker can't go to the cops. That's why we picked the guy. Uh-huh. That's one of the things I was trying to explain to you when I told you about calculated risks. Uh, I, I know. I remember. Uh, what's our next move? Well, we wait for Jocko to answer the note with the ad in the paper. Then we tell him where to plant the dough. Now, how long do you figure that'll take? If all goes well, about another day. How many times a day do they play that music down there? From nine to closing, about six hours. Uh, I'll just about make it. Excuse me, sir. Yes, Jim. I got Alice Wood's photograph from her mother. Good. Have you ordered any copies? Yes, sir. Oh, I found out something about the girl that might give us the motive for the kidnapping. What's that, Jim? Her father is Jocko Morgan. The bookmaker? That's right, sir. How'd you find that out? Well, Mrs. Woods told me that she had received a phone call from her ex-husband. He said that he'd gotten a ransom note and wanted to know whether or not the girl really had been kidnapped. And Jocko Morgan is her ex-husband? That's it, sir. They've been divorced for 15 years, and Mrs. Woods has resumed her maiden name. Oh, incidentally, she told me that her daughter believes that her father is dead. Have you been to see Morgan? Yes, sir. I went over to his apartment. Did he give you the note? No, not at first. In fact, he denied any knowledge of it. He was probably going to pay the money and not say anything to the police. I imagine so, yes. But he finally agreed to talk about it. In fact, he wound up begging us to help him find his daughter. That's a bit ironical. A man like Morgan asking the law to help him. Yes, isn't it? Well, we have to give the same cooperation we give to any other citizen. I realize that, sir, so I advise Morgan to follow the kidnapper's instructions and place the ad in tomorrow morning's papers. Where's the ransom note? I have it right here, sir. Uh, send it down to the lab for a check against the paper and typewriting standards. All right, sir. Mr. Evans. Oh, come in, Bob. Yes, sir. Hello, Jim. Hi, Bob. I uh, just interviewed the Rice girl, sir. Alice Wood's girlfriend? Yes, sir. She told me she could recognize one of the men if she saw him again. Did she describe him to you? Oh, no, not very well. But I'm going to meet her tomorrow morning at police headquarters and have her go over some pictures for us. Uh, Jim. Sir. You take Bob out to your desk and bring him up to date on the new elements in this case. And when you're finished, check back here with me. sleep, didn't you? Where am I? In a room. I mean, where? What is this place? It's a building. I want to go home. I don't blame you. Why are you keeping me here? It's a matter of money. 
What do you mean? We're holding you here till your old man pays off. My father? Yeah, that's right. Well, my father's dead. Since when? He died when I was a little girl. Oh, <laughs> had me scared for a minute. <laughs> so you won't be collecting from him? Oh, yes, we will. How? He ain't dead. What? Yeah, I just seen him last week. My, my father? Yes, your old man is Jocko Morgan. He's the biggest bookmaker in town. But if you think he's dead, you can get three to one from him personally that he ain't. You're, you're lying. Well, now, look, I can prove it to you. Uh, who's that? Uh, I'll be right with you. But wait a minute. Uh, see you later. The girl awake? Yeah, awake and crying. What's she crying about? I don't know. I just told her her old man was a bookmaker and she bust into tears. <laughs> sure would make me cry if my old man was a bookmaker. Yeah, look at this. What is it? Jocko ran the ad, see it? Oh, yeah. Huh. When do we get the door? You go in for it tonight. Are you busy, sir? Well, come in, Jim. Well, the ransom money has been planted. Good. We went to the vacant lot where it was supposed to be left. Morgan put the package beside the big rock with a white cross on it. Clinton stayed up there? Yes, sir, he did. He has a good vantage point. He'll call in just as soon as the money is picked up. Fine. Oh, did uh, anything come back from the lab on that ransom note, sir? Yes, but it wasn't much help. Mm -hmm. The paper is a cheap, common brand, and the typing was done in a typewriter without too many distinguishing marks. I see. Uh, pardon me, Jim. Certainly. Evans talking. Hello, sir. This is Clinton. Yes, Bob. What have you got? Money was just picked up. Who is it? Me. Open up. Right. Did you get it? Yeah. Swell. Any trouble? No. All right, let's have the package. Uh, sure. Yeah. It's torn open. I, I just took a peek at stuff to make sure it was real. You're sure nobody tailed you? No, nope, no, nope, nobody tailed me. The last five miles, I was the only car on the road. Uh, want me to help you? How? Counting the money. I can do it. <laughs> All that green stuff. And it's real. And it's ours. Uh, it's beautiful. Now, all we got to do is return the girl and the job's over. Oh, I forgot to tell you, we're not returning them. Really? Why not? Well, I had a talk with her. It seems she's not willing just to go home and forget all about this. Oh. She says she's going to the police and tell them that we did the job. Well, she don't know who we are. Do mm, she? Knows what we look like. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, uh, what are we going to do with it? You're going to take her partway back to town to the Smith Park Bridge. Uh, then what? Then you get rid of her. Oh, now, look, Harry, I... all I said in the note was that when we got the money, we'd release her. Well, when you get to the bridge, release her into the river. We will return in just a moment to tonight's file which shows how your FBI provides national security. Now a timely announcement on Social Security. Equitable Life Assurance Society surveys indicate that most people know little about their rights under Social Security. To correct this situation, the Equitable Society offers listeners a special service consisting of three steps. First step, full information. Your Equitable Society representative is an expert on Social Security. He's qualified to answer such puzzling questions as... Suppose a widow waits three years after her husband's death before making a claim for Social Security. Can she collect all the back payments she might have received? The answer is no. Your equitable representative will explain why. Does a man automatically start to receive Social Security benefits on his 65th birthday? Again, the answer is no. Your equitable representative will explain why. The second step in this equitable service is an immediate checkup on your position under Social Security. Since some errors cannot be corrected after four years, the Social Security Administration advises you to protect yourself by checking up regularly. Your Equitable Society representative will supply you with a special form approved by the Social Security Administration and show you what to do it. Then you're ready for the final step. That step is 
to help you build Social Security into full security. After you've found out where you stand in Social Security, your Equitable Society representative will show you how a comparatively modest investment in life insurance will build Social Security into full security. He'll show you how life insurance and Social Security, working as a team, can give you and your family a future free from money worries. There's no obligation whatsoever. So see your Equitable Society representative or write care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, Operation Ransom. Those who have made the field of crime their life work, who study constantly in an effort to understand the mind of the criminal and the forces which impel him to break the law, have agreed that there is no common prototype among the seven and a half million persons with arrest records in the United States. Some dress well, some dress badly. Some are well educated, some are totally unschooled. Some are tall, some are short. The various discrepancies between any two criminals can be as wide as those between any two law-abiding citizens. And yet, they do have their common bond, the things which make every criminal kin to every other criminal. One of those things, and this applies to those who commit crimes against property or crimes against the person, is that he is insulated against any feeling of compassion for his fellow man. To him, to the true criminal... The world exists so that he may live. And the easier that living comes, the better he likes it. Tonight's file continues at the local FBI field office. What time is it, Jim? I have, uh, 12.23, sir. So have I. I've let my watch that... I hope nothing has gone wrong. So do I, Jim. Well, the girl should have been released by now unless they've been holding her an awful long way from town. Yes, I know. How long do you think we ought to wait, sir, before we start searching? If we don't hear anything by one o'clock, we'll go into action. Mm-hmm. Have we got the serial numbers on the bills that Morgan used to pay the ransom with? Yes, the stenographic section is making copies of the list now. As soon as it's prepared, we'll start printing the ransom list for distribution. Yes, one o'clock, we'll send a copy to each of the newspapers, ask them to print it. You know, it's too bad we can't mark the money in cases like this. Yes, it is, but we don't dare gamble with the victim's life. Uh, I know, sir. Mr. Evans, can I come in? Uh, yes, Bob, what have you got? Alice Woods has been found. Where? When? She ran up to the toll gate at the Smith Park Bridge a few minutes ago. Is she all right, Bob? Well, she was exhausted and suffering from shock. Where is she now? At the Memorial Hospital, sir. Jim, you and Bob get over there at once. <laughs> calling up for? We uh, got trouble, George. Why? What happened? Well, I, I go over the bridge like you said. Yeah? And uh, I, I stopped the car and opened the back door. Go on. When I, when I opened the door, she ran up the other side of the car. Well, how could she do that? She was tied up, wasn't well, she? Yeah, but I, I guess she must have worked herself loose. Well, did you catch her? No. No, I couldn't. What? It, it was dark. She got away. You I... stupid fool. I planned everything no, perfectly. No, I'm sorry, George. A lot of good that'll do us. There's no telling how much she knows about where she was being held. She could lead the cops right back here. No, 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 she can't. Uh, she was still blindfolded just before I stopped it. George, what should I do now? Come on back here as fast as you can. Miss Wood, do you feel up to talking about your experience now? Yes, Mr. Taylor. I'll tell you whatever I can remember. That's fine, thanks. Now, first, we'd like to know how the kidnappers approached you. Well, I was riding in the park when a man standing on the side of the bridle path called after me. Did he know your name, Miss Woods? Yes, Mr. Clinton, he did. That's why I stopped. I see. 
I rode back to where he was standing, and he said that I had to come with him right away. My mother had been in a serious accident. I didn't say where, did he? No, sir, he didn't. Uh, well, what happened then? I dismounted, and the man led me to a car. When I got there, I saw another man. This uh, second man, was he behind the driver's wheel? Yes, that's right. I asked what kind of an accident Mother had had, and the man said she'd been driving her car down Oak Avenue and been hit by a truck. Mm, I see. Go on. I knew then that they were lying to me because Mother doesn't drive. Oh. I started to scream, but the man who called me clapped his hand over my mouth and threw me into the car. And that's when they drove away with you? Yes, sir. Uh, what did they do once they had you in the car, Miss Woods? The man in back with me blindfolded me and put a gag in my mouth. Then he covered me with a blanket. Uh-huh, I see. And did both men drive you back to the Smith Park Bridge tonight? No, sir, only one of them. That's how I was able to escape. I heard them planning to kill me, so when I got in the car, I used all my strength, and finally I got my hands loose. Were you gagged and blindfolded on the return trip, too? Yes, sir, until I got my hands loose, and that wasn't until just before we got to the cliff, by the bridge. Mm. Miss Woods, you don't know where you were held, do you? No, sir. I haven't the faintest idea. Well, is there anything you can tell us about the ride after you got in the car in the park? Did you hear any odd sounds or any conversation between the men? Well, let me think. Sure. Oh, a, a little while after we started, one of the men asked the other one for a, a quarter for the bridge. It must be the Smith Park Bridge at all. There's a quarter. Mm-hmm. Miss Woods, would you know which way you turned when you got off the bridge? No, I don't. But, but I remember after we rode a while... I heard some planes warming up, as if they were about to take off. You're sure they weren't flying above you? Oh, no, sir. I've done some flying, and I can tell the difference. Good. Now, is there anything else? Let's see. Oh, yes. A little bit after that, we went past what sounded like a waterfall. A waterfall? Yes. Jim, there, there are no waterfalls in this section. If that's what it sounded like to me, Mr. Clinton. I'm sorry. Please go on. Well, let's see. We rode for a little while more, and, and then we got on a bumpy road. And do you remember which way you turned to get onto this bumpy road? I don't remember turning. Oh? We only went a very short way on it, though, before we stopped, and I was carried into a building and taken upstairs. Still blindfolded? Yes. Now, did you hear anything in this building? Well, not then, but, but later on, after they fed me my dinner, I heard some music. Do you remember where it came from, Miss Woods? It seemed to come from underneath where I was... First, I thought it was just a radio, but they played so badly, I decided it was real music. Miss Woods, can you describe these two men to us? Yes, surely. Good. Suppose you start right now. Uh, yes, Jim. Alice Woods identified the two pictures I brought her as the men who kidnapped her. Oh, good. Who are they? One of them is uh, George Payne. The other is Harry Rollins. Here's some copies of the pictures. Oh, fine. Now our job is to find out where they took the girl. Oh, I picked up that map you wanted. Swell. That's it? Mm-hmm. Now, here's where the trip started. Uh -huh. And this is the exit they used to leave the park. Right. Then they went up the drive to the Smith Park Bridge. Yeah. Now... The problem is, which way did they turn when they got off the bridge? Uh, well, we know they went past an airport mm -hmm. very soon after they left the bridge. Uh, look, there's Hurley Field. Right. They'd have gone by that if they turned left. But Jim, if they turned right, they'd have gone by Western Airport. Oh, yeah. So they could have gone either way. Yeah, that's right. Now, the next thing Miss Woods remembered was that waterfall. That's a real baffler. I know that section. There is no waterfall. The only... Bob, I know what it was. But it was the Barrel Point Dam. I remember seeing a story in the paper this week that they opened the sluice gates on the dam because the water got too high. Well, then they must have turned right off the bridge. Check. And the next thing is that bumpy road. If we find that, we can find out where she was held. Well, let's see. She said they only went a short way on it. Mm -hmm. Bob, I know that highway. There are no side roads on it. And I drove it last summer. It's as smooth as glass. I sh Hey, wait a minute. What is it? Got an idea, Bob. Let's get to a phone. <laughs> Sorry, didn't I? It doesn't make up for your mistake. There was nothing I could do. You could have seen to it that she didn't get away. 
You need brains in this business, Harry. I've told you... Look, George, I know how smart you are, but I'm kind of tired of hearing about it. Suppose you give me my money and we'll call it quits, huh? What money? My cut. You better forget that. What? You're not getting anything. That's a joke I ain't laughing. I'm dead serious. George, you can't do this to me. Harry, I have a gun here that permits me to do anything. Who's that? All right, step back. Hey, what what do you say? The FBI. You let him tear you back here. No, he didn't. All right, come on, you two. Yeah, but we did... We're not going to blindfold you like you blindfolded Miss Woods. Now, we're going to let you see where you're going. And I have a hunch you'll recognize the jail when we get there. George Payne and Harry Rollins were tried, convicted, and sentenced to serve 50-year terms in a federal prison for kidnapping. Your FBI was led to the roadhouse where Miss Woods had been held captive because every clue, no matter how slim it appeared, was followed to its conclusion. One of those clues was that Miss Woods remembered that she had been driven by the kidnappers over a bumpy road and that the car had stopped shortly afterwards. A check with the State Highway Commission showed that there was a part of the highway under repair, but open to traffic. The roadhouse was situated beside that section of the highway. And so your FBI was able to close another file, to close it the way almost every kidnapping file has been closed, with the word convicted stamped across it. just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. Now, a quick review of the three-point Social Security service offered by your Equitable Society representative. First, he gives you a clear picture of what Social Security can accomplish for you. Second, your Equitable Society representative supplies you with the special form approved by the Social Security Administration for checking up on your position. Third, he shows you how easy it is to build Social Security into full security. Take advantage of this special service offered without charge by your equitable representative and the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, a factual account of the operation of a stolen car ring. Its subject, Interstate Theft. Its title... The Unwilling Partner. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. This is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The unwilling partner on This is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.